Okay, let's start. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Alexey Khodorkovsky. I'm an associate director at Adiax company. Uh, today we are reviewing the, um, the presentation for the case study of the URL.com project. Ah, I'm sorry. I'll rest on. Uh, so today we are, we are reviewing the, the, um, the case study for the URL.com uh, web project, which we are working on right now uh, since uh, the end of 2012, and we're going to continue to work on this project. I'm happy to, um, to present you the, the IT manager of URL.com, who kindly agreed um, to, to assist uh, me during this uh, presentation today. Um, a small introduction for uh, Adiax company, well, I just Drupal uh, shop in Europe. Uh, we have accomplished more than 300 big projects, Drupal big projects. We have um, 150 Drupal experts worldwide. We're working for big companies like Johnson & Johnson in, uh, in, the, in the care area. Um, Givenchy, Guerlain, Céline in luxury area, Viore in environment. and. Uh, other big projects. As for agenda um, of this presentation, we are going to um, talk a little bit about URL company. Um, we will be discussing and Hugo will be presenting uh, us um, the reasons uh, why this project has started. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, what will be the goal, what was the goals and objectives for this uh, project. Um, Hugo will present us as well the teams who are working on, on this project. Um, later on, we will, well, I'll, I'll present the, the timeline and the key decisions which were taken during this project. At the end, of course, uh, results and lessons learned and questions answers. Um, Hugo, can you please? Can you hear me so? Good. So, oh. All right, thank you. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, uh, my name is Hugo Knobout. I'm IT manager at uh, URL.com. And um, I will first start to say uh, something about our company. Uh, what, are, what, what are we selling online? And why we started the Drupal project two years ago? Euro.com is a 100% e-commerce e uh, company. That means that we only sell online. So the internet is really important for us. So uh, no offline time is, uh, is, is good, of course. Um, what we do is we sell train passes, not just train tickets, where you can travel from A to B, but uh, uh, train passes. So when you want to uh, discover Europe, for instance, you can buy a, a global pass and you can travel through Europe by train. Um, we're in the top 50 of uh, Dutch e-commerce companies and we are situated in Utrecht um, and we have 30 uh, employees. So that's not a lot. I explain later why we can do it with 30 people. And we have an expected turnover this year about 60 million dollars, uh, euros. Um, I wish I can keep it all, but that's not how it works. In fact, um, we buy our of uh, the passes by the Eurail Group, which are the 30 um, uh, European railway companies together. So they're united in the Eurail Group, and they uh, have products and we buy their products so and we sell them uh, online so in fact we are uh, an, an official agent uh, the URL pass was already introduced in uh, 1959 uh, but uh, at that time there was of course no e-commerce so uh, at that time people bought their uh, passes uh, at the uh, local train stations so since 2006, uh, we started the company, just first with one person, and after... <laughs> uh, 
Uh, did I do that? No. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> um, so just with one person, and la two years ago we were with uh, 18 people, and now we are 30. So we are growing uh, very, very uh, fast. Uh, we have three uh, websites. We're selling uh, the passes. It's the URL.com, interrail.eu, and germanrailpasses.com. And why three different websites? That's because the Interrail product is only for European residents and the uh, Eurail product for non-European re uh, residents. German Rail Pass is just the one country pass you can travel um, through Germany, of course. How does our website look like? It's, uh, this is after the project re release, so it's the current website. Uh, you can go to .com and uh, see uh, the website. Look like this. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, in the top menu there are some um, some topics. So of course, we have the, the passes. You can see we have for URL four flavors. Uh, what I mentioned earlier, you have the global pass, so you can travel through Europe. Um, besides that, we have the four country pass, so you can travel through four countries. The regional pass, two countries, and the one country pass, of course, is just one country. Uh, we also have information about the trains, all the trains in Europe. We have information about the, all the destinations you can travel to, all the countries. So these are really good information that can be kept in a content type, as you can see. Our Interrail website looks pretty much the same. Uh, the, uh, the colors are a bit different, but uh, the tone of voice is completely different because we try to, uh, our main customers for Interrail are uh, students or uh, graduated uh, people. And for URL, it's more uh, a once in a lifetime trip. People from the United States or uh, Australia coming over to Europe and want to do a, uh, a Euro trip. So I was talking about we only have 30 people and so what we are doing in fact is we concentrate on everything that has to do with trains uh, and, and etc. And everything where we're not good in and we're experts around the world like Drupal. We uh, um, find a good uh, partner or a supplier that can help us uh, achieving our goals. So our internal focus is of course content migration of content and media creation. So we have a lot of uh, content writers. Uh, we write on the website but also on our blog. Um, customer service is one of our uh, major uh, points um, because we have uh, customer service people all, all over the world. So if a, a guy from Brazil has a question, it's really good that a Brazilian customer service agent can reply on it. It's his native language and he knows the culture, so it's, it's really close by. Of course, we do some business development and uh, a strong point that we uh, have is the search engine marketing, SEO, etc. So what do we not do? For instance, the complete payment. Uh, it's done by Ogona and Adyen. Uh, our fulfillment center. So once you buy a pass, it will directly go to our fulfillment center where actually the pass is printed and uh, sent to the customer. Uh, you would say, why is it not electronic yet? Uh, we have to deal with 30 uh, railway companies, so it takes a long, long time to have a, a one decision. Uh, it's like the European uh, uh, law, etc. Um, uh, pass delivery, we don't do, and even the translations, we don't do. Uh, we have a special company that grabs our content from our website. Uh, it's translated by humans, not automatically and it's put uh, back on the, on the website. So we don't have to worry about the, the, the length of the translations. We only care about the English version of the website. Two years ago, we had a supplier we were not pretty happy with. Um, we, we had a lot of ideas. We want to 
go fast and the current supplier was not really uh, able to, to have that uh, same speed. And I think through the years, we were, were bigger and bigger and faster and faster and they couldn't keep us. Uh, so, um, and uh, uh, also the quality was not that great. So at a certain moment, my management team said, okay, we start a website project. And uh, we start all over again with, uh, from, from hosting to a uh, complete website layout design. So this was a very big project. Um, and the main sum of the objectives, the goals were find a new partner, not a supplier, but a partner that really thinks with us because we're not the experts and, and we have to rely on what they're advi given advice they given us. Um, and it should be in Europe because our translation uh, supplier is in the United States and they're good too, but you always have the time difference between Europe and the United States. So it's really hard to uh, set up a conference call. So one of the things is, okay, we have to work together very close, so um, it should be in Europe. And only with Drupal experts. So not doing Magento, not doing Drupal, not doing SmartSide or another CMS system. No specialists in Drupal. So that was one. Make sure the website is always online. Um, it's now, yeah, it's always online now. But at that time, two years ago, we had a one or two hour um, downtime a week. So that's for a 100% e-commerce company, it's, 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 it's worth it. Um, increase the... increase the user experience of performance on the locations where our customers are. And we are selling through, uh, through all the world. So uh, our uh, markets are United States, uh, Canada, Brazil, Sydney, uh, Australia, uh, especially Sydney, and, uh, but also Asia. Um, and with only one server at that time, located in the Netherlands, we had a huge delay in, uh, in showing the website. So, and there, uh, Alexi will tell you more about it in detail, uh, there the CDN comes into play. Content management should be super easy. Uh, at that time, we, the, all my, uh, the content writers should have a, a, a skill in HTML because otherwise it was not possible to, to uh, create an article. And since they're trained specialists, they do not know anything about HTML. So you can imagine what the page looks like after go live that page. So it was not very nice. Um, at that moment, we had only web page. So we had no uh, content type whatsoever. So um, if we want to change uh, a part of, 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 for instance, it was one country out of the past, then we had to change it on 30 different places. So it's ridiculous because with a content type, you can do it automatically and change it once. But at that time, we had just uh, the content type web page and no, there were a lot of web pages. So, and, but one of the things is because there were a lot of information already there. So we had to migrate all the data, of the, the, the content from the old system to the new system from an unstructured way to a structured way. So you can imagine how much work that was. Mm -hmm. And then before high season, so it was a bit of time pressure. Um, and of course, if we can have a better system, then we can make more, make more money. And that's what it's all about for us, because we're a commercial company. Sorry, yeah. Um, I will be talking about this. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it will, it will be present. So um, one of the things was that we had a Drupal supplier that was also our hosting supplier and we want to split that. So we would have, like have uh, Drupal specialists and hosting specialists. Um, and the same we have had 
at that time was an e-commerce specialist and also a hosting. So we had double, ho double hosting. So for the website and for the web shop. So that's not really very handy. So we were looking for a new Drupal and for a new hosting partner. Um, at the time we had Drupal 6, so we want to move to Drupal 7. Um, and besides that, it would be nice to have a new design. Oh, that's easy. No, it wasn't. And of course, um, not just migrating the old website to the new one, it's, it should all be ready for, for the future. Um, some railway companies are uh, experimenting with e-ticketing, so it will take at least five years from now, but it's good to have it already there. Uh, other points are API and web services, so when we want to connect, for instance, hotels to our, to our pass, it's, it's really handy to have a, some kind of connection between the two systems, so an API would be very handy then. And other items that would be very nice to have. So in the end, um, we took a long time for selecting a partner. And at that time, I went to the DrupalCon in, in, in Munich. And, and that's very nice, because there are a lot of suppliers. And I already had a, a short list. And so it, it gives a really good opportunity to speak them all, to not only speak to the salespeople, but also to the, to the technical people and how they see things. And uh, are they thinking with, with you, or is it just Okay, I can create it, I can make that, yes, no problem at all. Is, are, they, are they working with you or please you only? So it's, it was very nice. So in the end, we, um, we selected Adiax um, um, for a Drupal a partner and um, Akia for our hosting um, solution. And then it was, before we started the project, it, there, there are a lot of uh, advantages of having uh, all the expertise outsourced, but there is one disadvantage, and that's when you start a project like this, because it's it's a huge project, and all the suppliers have to be in sync. So if you change there, it can affect the other suppliers. So that was a real struggle during the project. All right. Continue with uh, uh, key steps and the timeline, how we did it actually. So um, uh, the project was uh, divided into several sub projects. Actually, the request for proposal um, was received at the end of uh, 2012. Um, we agreed to uh, run the of onboarding to a web platform uh, in the beginning of the year. Later, we put uh, this Drupal website into support, maintenance by the Axe, and also we started the migration path to Drupal 7. Uh, in the beginning of 2014, uh, we have released the Drupal uh, website. We started the support on it, and then we <coughs> launched the e-commerce project, the huge brand new e-commerce project. And next year, we're going to release a commerce project and we'll start to iterate with the new features, new developments, and new elements. Um, I'll go through all the sub-projects and projects to show you how actually we were doing it and um, what actions have we, um, have we performed to, to accomplish the, the goal. So we'll start with onboarding. Actually, uh, onboarding um, was here to, to address plenty goals and objectives. We had to, to analyze the existing problems. We had to uh, perform the audit. We had to, to correct the security and performance issues. We had to um, onboard the, the, the applications on a new platform. We had to, to ensure that, um, that there are no functional technical regressions. And um, if we're talking about the steps, actually on the top of the slide you can see uh, the, the time frame where when we were performing this or that task, so you, you can feel actually how much time, from time to time, it can take 
to, to perform this or that. So the first step uh, for onboarding was, of course, the offboarding. Uh, you can see the, the, the checklist icon on the left. and um, Well, actually, it's always good to use checklists. Um, you can put things there, and you can validate the deliverables against this list. So it's, it was really handy for us to, to do it for, for off-boarding. So actually, while doing off-boarding, we were requesting the, 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 the previous supplier to deliver us all the exports, all the configuration files. We were checking with URL.com to see the latest outstanding um, accidents on production to, to, to focus on, on, the, on the existing problems. Later, we have performed two, uh, two audits. First of all, uh, one was done on the Acquire site, where um, uh, our colleagues from Acquire was, uh, were testing the, the health and security and performance of the code. They were analyzing the custom service, service configurations. On our side, we were doing functional discovery and um, performance third-party uh, integration just to be able to, to take this application into support and maintains. As soon as um, the, the audit reports were delivered, uh, we were able to define actually the, the list of the, the issues which we are facing. Most of them were in the performance and security area. So we agreed with, uh, with our colleagues from URLs that to deliver and to, to onboard it on, on the new platform, we need to correct the critical and blocker issues so we won't have any outstanding security or performance problems. As soon as it was done, uh, we started to work with Acquoia to, uh, to prepare the platform. So what we did, we measured with the help of the traffic, with the help of the um, server um, resources usage, we have measured uh, how powerful platform should be. Uh, we provisioned it. Later, we put all the necessary configuration in it. We adjusted and we corrected those configuration to meet the best practices um, which is used by Acquire. And at the other end, we put applications there. We are talking about uh, three different applications which are running on the same code base. So it's three websites on the same code base. Um, as soon as the project was on board, we started to, to perform the functional and performance testing. So functional testing were shared between uh, URL.com uh, team and uh, the X team. So, uh, so we were ensuring that, that there are no functional or, or, or technical regressions on it. Uh, of course, uh, one of the important issues was to, to, to measure how our performance improvement works. So we used such tools as Blaze Matter or, and Blitz uh, cloud performance um, testing tools. So you can see, actually, after onboarding, the, the results were much better than, than before. And, of course, the release were, were planned in the way that uh, the risks were minimized. So we started with the project, which had uh, less traffic, less uh, revenues uh, were coming from this uh, web project. So we started from general passes, then we passed the stabilization period of one week, and then we onboarded and activated other websites. As soon as it was done, we started the, the Drupal 6 support. Objectives, of course, support assistance, uh, preventive and adaptive uh, maintenance, and of course, SLA, as far as uh, the project is completely e-commerce and 100% online. Uh, while running a support uh, project, we also performed two small sub-projects. One of them was CDN uh, integration activation, which actually allowed us to, to improve the availability of the website and performance of the website in such painful areas as China, uh, Russia, uh, countries of South and uh, America. Uh, second sub-project was integration of automatic testing. So we integrated the, the tests for the to support our continuous integration and on the other side uh, to, to avoid any, any and the unavailability of the content or the major functionalities. We performed the user flow tests, which were executed on daily and weekly basis by automatic tools, and which were delivering the reports to us saying that this or that functionality is available all the time. 
in parallel, we have started Drupal 7 uh, project. So uh, the goals for this project, as was already mentioned by Hugo, uh, was to make the redesign um, in, in terms of front end, to, th to rethink the, the architecture, to um, improve the content and uh, media sharing. And of course, uh, by making this migration to ensure that um, uh, search engine will still like the site. Um, as a, one of the first step, we, we decided to, um, to to keep iterating on the on, on the business requirements and on functional specifications. So start starting from the business requirements initially, and with the functional discovery from which was coming from Drupal 6 website, we we made plenty of iterations uh, on the on the design on the functionalities and. It's one of the things that we discovered for us. It's never late to test new things and to improve things. Um, uh, various uh, architectural decisions were taken. So structured content, uh, no block system, um, improved sharing system, improved back office, um, product display and product selection as well. Uh, in terms of development, of course, we were using agile methodology, which fits this project quite well. Uh, it took us around 15 sprints to release. Uh, almost uh, uh, most of them were three week sprints, but at the end uh, when we were finalizing the, and stabilizing the, 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 the application, we reduced it to one week sprints. So actually um, our backlog was uh, uh, iterating and it was updating all the time with new ideas, with new things. And finally, we decided that uh, three weeks, uh, three months before the release, we will uh, make the freeze of features and freeze of content. So no more features will be integrated into the scope and no more content will be added on the current website. Very, very interesting and very complicated uh, uh, element for us was um, the migration path. Actually, um, we had to, to, to be sure that uh, after the migration to, uh, to Drupal 7 uh, and while well, changing the application, changing the structure of URL, changing the structure of the content, we won't lose um, the availability of, of the web, those projects in, in the search results. So to, to ensure that um, together with the URL team, we decided to to perform some upfront actions. Um, so all the pages which uh, had to change in Drupal 7 website um, were merged and unpublished ori on original website, like three or four months before, before the migration. Uh, uh, the content was iteratively translate, uh, transformed into the new version on original website. So uh, search engine would get acquainted with this um, information much before the release moment and we won't have this um, spike of uh, um, unsatisfied search engine. Um, of course, migration of the, uh, of the content with all the URLs. And very interesting uh, method we were using for the, for the testing of the migration. We actually were doing um, mirror testing. So all the traffic which was uh, well, which, exi which exists for the current website was replicated to, to, the, to, to the new website. So we got actually a real traffic on the new platform, which was in hidden mode. Uh, with this, we, uh, we detected directly all the 404 errors, uh, all the missing elements. So we, while well, adding like 301 redirects uh, and so on by creating extra content, we were fulfilling actually this gap of which you usually face while doing migration. And of course, uh, before releasing of the new project, always think about uh, the platform. So we made uh, workshops with our colleagues from Acquire to, to remeasure and redimension the platform to, to support the Drupal 7 application, which is usually more uh, more resources consuming applications. Of course, uh, tested against uh, already existing uh, test cases uh, with Blitz and, and Blaze Meta. 
release, same strategy, works fine, why, why change it? As soon as um, uh, the project was released, so that happened in the beginning of this year, we activated uh, Drupal 7 support for, for um, our, our client. We had the same objectives, but this time, as far as the code was owned by Adiax, we didn't have any major issues since go live, so since beginning of this year. Um, as soon as, as that was done, uh, we calmed down a little bit in terms of new features and stuff, but very soon URL returned to us asking if we can start thinking with them about e-commerce project in Drupal. So it's how the new uh, project arrived, um, completely new project which is e-commerce in, um, in the application. So the goal uh, for those projects, for this project was to, uh, to rethink, to rethink uh, the e-commerce e component of the URL.com uh, ecosystem, uh, to improve uh, the architecture, to remove all the outdated and manual processes, and of course, be prepare prepare the the the, the project to uh, to be able to to receive new features in faster way. Ah. Uh, step zero was how we'll do it and um, we made several workshops with URL and other partners to see what will be the best solution for, 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 for URL.com where the, the, the two major um, uh, options were the integration with Magento and integration of Drupal Commerce into the applications. Um, why Magento was not selected in this setup? Um, actually, one of the goals for URL.com was to, um, to decrease the number of, we can call it useless synchronization between uh, different applications. There were the issue with uh, additional application to support. There was a question of uh, additional uh, associated costs when some business logic should be replicated from Magento to Drupal to get this work together. Um, and of course, the integrated solution, Drupal Commerce, which can be simple can be uh, easily installed and then tailored for the sake of URL.com was, was selected. Um, next step for this uh, project was uh, capturing of business requirements. For this sake, we involved our colleagues from uh, London Office of Commerce Guys who helped us to uh, collect up to 300 uh, user stories. Uh, more than 1,000 uh, acceptance criteria were uh, described and um, which later will evolve into a detailed testing plan. And some white papers were written to, um, to describe uh, the, the potential technical decisions which can be taken. Um, we were working on the architecture. We, we had two various solutions. We, we had two, two different solutions. One, uh, which is on the left, um, was having Drupal, Comer, Drupal Commerce actually integrated in each of the applications. So as far as we're having three different websites, we're thinking that uh, Drupal Commerce inside of each application can, can, can work much better than the, the, um, the situation when Drupal Commerce will act as a multi-channel um, uh, e-commerce solution for all of those uh, websites. For the sake of development and, and planning, we, we split all the functionalities into the, the building blocks, which were, which will, which are owned by, by a separate project manager who, who, is, in, who is ensuring um, the communication with third parties, with 
payment uh, provider, with the fulfillment uh, centers, with partners. Um, um, of course, at the end of the of the iteration of this project, we will be working with Acquia to to redimension the the platform to to onboard correctly the e-commerce solution in it. Mostly, two areas would be the improvement in terms of uh, database servers to perform uh, more transactions and um, extra front servers to, to support customer service and, and checkout processes. As for release, still the same. It works. Um, I'm moving to the results and learnings uh, uh, area. And um, it's very important, we found out with Hugo that it's very important um, after a certain number of iterations, sprints, we sit together and we, we discuss actually what, uh, what results we have after those iterations, what actually lessons we, 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 we learned uh, after each of them, and we try to improve all the time. But after the end of the Drupal 7 project, we, we, we identified the, the next results, which for us are the most important ones. So from the technical and uh, business perspective, uh, we receive very scalable and uh, stable uh, hosting platform. Um, as far as we were not having any downtimes during or since since the beginning of the of the year, uh, the the sales are very stable. Uh, the editors of the URL.com um, precise that uh, the user experience and content management was improved. And of course, uh, e-commerce flows were optimized by removing uh, outdated um, processes and very manual operations. Would you help me with, uh, with other? So I wrote down a couple of lessons learned. We learned a lot during this, uh, this, uh, this year and two years. Um, uh, what really helped was f uh, taking the time to, to find the, the right supplier. Uh, I, I think it took me almost six months to, f to find the right one. Because when you select one, you will stick stuck with them for three, five, or maybe ten years. So it's worth taking the time for selecting a, a partner. That that's, is, is breathing almost the same a, as you do. So it is, they were working to get, working in the same way, thinking with you, etc. So that was a good learning experience. Um, you find the word flexible is all about functional specification. Um, I asked my management team about flexibility, how flexible should the system be, and I asked the same question to our content writers. You can imagine the answers weren't exactly the same. So it cost me a lot of time to say, okay, what really do you want and why do you need it? Because the content uh, writers, they, yeah, they were used to add uh, JavaScript and HTML to it, so I said, oh, that, that would be very handy. But yeah, our management team said, no, your, your goal is to write as many train articles as possible. So it was real, really a struggle in the beginning from what do you really want to have on this new system? Steering committees, we, uh, every month we sat together with the uh, URL.com project managers and the uh, Adiax project managers. And we had a steering committee and it was not about the technical details, but it was how is our collaboration working? Is it fine or uh, do we see any problems? Do we communicate enough? Uh, because they're, they're situated in Paris and we are in Utrecht. So there's a lot on Skype, on, on conference calling, etc. And sometimes it's better to sit in one room and actually uh, say what you're trying to say, and uh, especially when you're doing specifications. So once a month, it's, it's real worth taking that time. And there were a lot of good times too. So, and there's nothing wrong with giving a compliment when it's going uh, okay. So yeah, that was really, um, and, and we, we tried to do it coming Thursday. 
we had another steering committee, so uh, Alexi will be at our uh, office and we talk about how can we improve communication. As uh, Alexi mentioned, there are now five project managers at our site, so you can imagine how much communication there is. Um, uh, Adiax is using at the moment the Red, uh, Redmine system. It's a, a tracking and documentation system and it was really helpful for us because we, can, we could see what was what the developers were doing at that moment. If they had any questions, they can, could directly put them on the, on the tracking system and we could directly uh, answer them. So it was, was a real uh, time saving there. Um, and now we have, during the whole project, we, we, we continued updating the documentation. So now we have it all uh, okay on, uh, on Redmine. Content migration, that was, I think we're all IT kind of guys, so um, yeah. Content is a totally different aspect of, uh, of the project. Uh, for us it's just words, 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 so just cut, cut, copy and paste them there, but for a content writer it's totally different. It's, it's their baby, it's, it's their creation, and same for, for the images. So we just copy the three images over there. Oh, no, 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 it can be done. It should be pixel perfect. So uh, it took a while. And uh, as mentioned by Alexei, we, we did the three-week sprints. And for us, on the other side, it was also very uh, handy because we could write this functional specification. We could do the acceptance testing. Uh, we could all start with the content migration while all little parts already finished. So we created our own uh, uh, three-week sprint. Um, that's about it. Yeah. Any so questions? Do you have any questions? Yeah, please. If you prefer. Yeah, actually, uh, from technical perspective, yes. um, there are several tricks that you can do with it. First of all, you can use the access logs, which is very safe. So you take the access log of your web server, like for example Apache or Nginx, you scan it and you simulate the same uh, the same traffic. The other trick, which exists and it's not very fair for end users because um, because end users experience some extra downloading but actually the trick is that you can include on each page of your website you can include the high and iframe which takes the URL of the current page and directly calls the new platform the hide and platform so user doesn't see the page loaded but Backend experienced the, the the hit or miss or whatever. So actually, the combination of those two tests was were used to from one side to to validate the um, the migration uh, to see the 404, 301 errors, and on the other side to test the performance as well to see if we are able, the current application is able to cope with the, the same traffic, the same level of traffic. So at the moment of switch, the platform won't experience any, any spikes in the, in, the, in the runtime. I hope I have answered your question. Um, I will answer, I will start with the second question. So we are using uh, Jenkins web server, uh, the t test server, uh, continuous integration server, and we run the tests uh, written on Ruby and Cucumber. So this is the question of, um, uh, of the tooling. 
As for uh, the question how we have identified the, the zones that should be automated. So there are two, two, two groups of functionalities. First group is the group of critical zones and critical paths. So which should be, and f critical features which should be validated each time the code is delivered. So this is a part for continuous integration. So usually you can easily identify those zones for e-commerce platform. So this is shopping cart, uh, buy it now buttons, availability of the products displays, or what is e-commerce funeral uh, process. Uh, on other side, um, when you want to verify the availability of several critical contents of the site, you usually you can ask the the owners of the the content and owners of the um, uh, of the web application to to help you to identify the uh, first of all the critical information that should be tested. Uh, why why we were testing availability of content because uh, initially the uh, while while working with another. Uh, provider, uh, the quality was not so good, so pages were disappearing from time to time. And if it's not a secret, uh, one person in URL.com had to go on daily basis and check availability of one to 20 pages, I would say. That was automated, for example. Um, and of course, um, there, there are some tooling which allows you to see um, the fastest uh, actually user flow to the funeral. So you usually test the areas which help you to convert. Uh, yeah, we uh, we did a project before this project for doing a new redesign, and we did not take that into account. So we said, okay, we are not doing that. Besides, um, uh, we uh, our uh, passes are uh, not cheap, so it is a, a real uh, ex uh, a lot of money. And so for a little mobile phone, you're you're not using. Our website is our experience, and we we measured that, and it's it's less than one percent. So, so but um, we're taking it into account now. But yeah, it's a bit of waste of money, of course, because you have to start all over again. But we're not sure what to do with mobile. I can imagine that we use mobile uh, during your your trip in Europe. So then, but then you don't need our website. Then you need other tooling that helps you traveling through Europe. So we are not quite there which direction we have to go. So that was, that's why. Yeah, please. Why exactly, why exactly you separated the Google coding from hosting? Because in this case also, of course, companies could do both things. What was the logic for the two? For us? For us it was because it was uh, from the past. We saw the current hosting and Drupal expert were doing two times not a good job, which is 50-50. So we said, okay, let's go for a real Drupal expert team and, and, and another for the hosting. So that's more about how we saw it that time. But from the technical perspective, I would say that um that if you're an expert in something, you should stay in this area and do the maximum you can in this area. It's one of the, uh, that one of the things that we learn actually in IDX. We had so many opportunities to expand into different technologies, but we focus on Drupal, and it's what our colleagues from uh, Acquire is doing in, in, in the hosting area, I would say, because they have some 
extra departments who, who are working. Um, the idea behind splitting those things is to, to separate the, the zones of responsibility, where um, uh, when IDX in this setup and Drupal provider in general uh, thinks about application itself, it might go a little bit further and to, to, to check the, the, the configurations and stuff, but the hosting is completely different thing. And you have to, 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 to hire the experts of completely different profile who knows how to, to identify the zones. You have to, uh, to tune the applications. And it's very two different areas and domains of expertise. So by separating and doing things correctly, in each of the zones, we ensure the quality which, which uh, we see, I would say, for this project. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, uh, I will answer. Um, actually, uh, at the current stage, uh, in Drupal 7 project, as I called it, uh, we had to integrate with a standalone e-commerce solution, which is called Intershop, where um, Drupal was acting as a vitrine website, which was integrated uh, as well, um, the shopping and dynamic elements for the product management. Uh, and of course, my account zone, where all the e-commerce logic, couponing, uh, shipping, fulfillment, and other stuff was managed in the standalone e-commerce platform. Today, when uh, URL.com would like to to minimize the number of applications, and in the in the ecosystem where Drupal actually can act both as a content management system uh, and as e-commerce platform, uh, I think it's kind of logical uh, move. And of course, there were plenty of other reasons why, why URL.com was decided to, to move and to go uh, e-commerce with Drupal. Uh, so yeah, right now we are running this project and it's the, 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 the first sprints of the development uh, of this project, and which will be released in the beginning of next year where actually e-commerce will be migrated from the st second standalone application into the Drupal. Yeah. <laughs> right. You had a question. Yeah, I think on one of your slides you mentioned that you have to choose for two colors. Um, you came up with five white pieces. Yeah. Uh, we need to see actually the weather if we can share them. But uh, those white papers are about uh, the best uh, practices how you can make, for example, white labeling, uh, how architecture can be selected for this or that uh, sake. Uh, I don't know, we, we need to see if, if we can you can take my, my business card and send me an email uh, to, to check this out. I cannot answer it right now, but we can discuss it with, with URL.com. At the current stage, it's internal documentation, uh, which was delivered by Commerce Guys and Ajax for URL.com. Um, any questions? I thought we were, we were calculating it. Uh, it was, yeah, I don't know, but, but in average, it's th those projects of this type is around 15,000 hours of all the profiles. So it's uh, actually um, for the last year, we had a team of three to four. I, I never told, I, I, I didn't make a slide for the, for the team. I, I will tell you. So we had a team of uh, development team uh, of um, three to four persons. It was depending on the, on the, on the load actually, uh, because some of the sprints were taking more 
uh, features into it. Some of them were taking less, so the, the team was there. Uh, we had a, a QA team of two to three person, depending on the load. Uh, so this is manual QA teams. We had uh, uh, one person who was ensuring the automated testing, uh, system administrator, we had two project managers uh, on our side, and this year it will be three project managers, team of five persons, of developers, and um, yeah, e-commerce project is very short-term project. We, if I don't know if you noticed, but uh, we plan we are planning to deliver it in five months. Um, yeah, so I would say it's around fifteen thousand hours total and in general uh, when I have presented the project that we are doing it's the project of average 10 to 20 to 25 thousand uh, hours it's the project of one and more year yes uh, any other questions okay thank you very much um, I would like to just to show you one thing. IDX is running a Drupal 8 hack um, contest. Uh, the goal of this contest is to try to hack Drupal 8 installation. So you can find it by this address. Uh, you can go there. There's Drupal on it. It's a separate uh, virtual machine which has or has not some security updates installed or deployed. Uh, each day we are delivering extra, uh, well, we are simplifying your job. We are delivering extra features for you. So last time we have activated, I think, the registration without, uh, without confirmation and uh, login without, uh, um, without uh, um, without error control, actually. You can try to brute force the thing if you want. Uh, so the one who, uh, who will hack Drupal 8 will gain the parrot drone. And you can go and see it. It's a huge flying machine. So I think you should be motivated. <laughs> so please rate um, the, the session. And if you have a questions, uh, I'll put my my business cards here, please take, ask any questions, contact me by email or by phone if you need any assistance. Thank you.